wouldn't it be rather impressive if we could get our hands and our feet working together when we drive a car? That's next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Aussie new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. Now, this is Pro Tip Tuesday, the day of the week, quite arbitrarily, that I choose to wage war on crap drivers everywhere. And I see this all the time, you know, there's this epidemic of crap driving. Crap drivers teach their kids to become crap drivers. Drivers with no idea and frankly no business teaching other people to drive as badly as them. Anyway, let me get down from my hobby horse and talk about this one specific thing that you need to know if you want to be a decent driver. And that is that the steering and the throttle work together when you drive around a bend. And I'm not so much talking about when you turn left or right at the traffic lights. I'm talking about driving in this sort of fast flowing highway and back road context where you need to put the car in space and time and make it go around a predetermined path because not doing that could end extremely badly. Cornering is one of those processes that is extremely hard to get right. It's hard for so many reasons because the amount of cornering force that you can exert with your car is limited by the tyres and the available conditions underfoot and because it's also proportional to the square of the speed. So small differences in speed around a corner make great differences to the demands on the tyres basically and it is extremely hard to get this right. That's why it's so hard to learn. So one of the things that I see people doing all the time is that they're fighting the throttle and the steering on the way in and around a bend. So let's talk about that. And to do that we better divide a bend into two different parts, the way in and the way out with a border in between called the apex which is the tightest part of the radius in the corner at the sort of exact geometric middle. So you could think of it like this, on the way into a bend you're trying to get the car to turn through an increasingly tight radius until you clip this hypothetical point called the apex and then you unwind the steering and the radius of the turn decreases until you're not in the turn anymore and you're back to going straight ahead. So we've got on the way in, like right about now, hitting the apex about here and then on the way out and the steering opens up and all of a sudden you're straight ahead again. And what I have to do now is warn you that we are going to use the P word to understand why. That would be physics. This segment is rated P for physics, and M for mathematics, and E for engineering, and S for science. So I'm sorry about that, but not B for bullshit, because we don't do that here. Anyway, let us step outside the time domain and channel our inner physics nerds in the manner of Albert Einstein conducting a thought experiment, a differential wafer in time, the magic I-30SR, frozen in that instant in a hard left-hand bend. And we know it's in a left-hand bend because, goodness me, we're steering that way. So the physics of making something go around a nice curvy path like this, it's just not that complex. All you need is velocity like this on a tangent to the curve, and you need acceleration like this at 90 degrees. They're the only two things. If you've got velocity and acceleration, then you are going to go around a corner because that's how this works. So um, a really smart but kind of dead guy named Isaac Newton once famously said that if you want to make something accelerate laterally, all you have to do is push it. He actually said that the time rate of change of momentum of a body acted upon by an unbalanced force is inversely proportional to the mass and directly proportional to the force. But what he really meant was if you want to make something accelerate sideways, just push it, son. It has to be an easier way. You should know this because 
You're doing it. Your hands are on the wheel. It's that effort that's being multiplied by the power assistance system and then the rack ratio. And it's nudging a ton and a half of metal hard to the left and getting you around the bend. So there's your opportunity to hack the grip right there by tweaking the powerful mechanical interlocking between the tread and the road using the high tech miracle of weight transfer. People misunderstand grip. They say grip is just friction, but it's not. That's bullshit and I'll prove it to you. Friction is just a material property, but grip is hugely dependent on the mechanical interlocking of the rubber and the road because the rubber is flexible under load. Here's a precision interlocking assessment metrology surface that I prepared earlier. You might think it's just a sheet of printer paper, but au contraire. Grips just friction. That deformation and interlocking of the tyres where they hit the road is vital to keeping you on track in a bend. And you can hack it with the throttle, if you know how. So there's your evidence of powerful mechanical interlocking between the tyres and the road and those big forces that they generate. I guess one option is you could always get a fat middle-aged man to come and sit right about here just to park his ass over the front end of your car every time you want some more grip at the front. But I doubt at 70 or 80 k's an hour on the way into a bend he'd be that motivated, you know, to have a crack at that. However, one of the other things you could do is take advantage of the car's inertia. And by doing that, all you have to do is have a gentle lift off the throttle. You know how everyone's head goes forward in that situation? Well, exactly the same thing happens to the weight of the car. It transfers up to the pointy end. You get more load over the front tires, more powerful mechanical interlocking, and more effect from the same steering input on the way in. So if you lift off on the way into a bend, the steering will work better. And as you clip the apex and you start squeezing the throttle on, the weight transfers to the back, the steering becomes a little less effective, which is exactly what you want in this situation because after the apex, you want the car to start running wide on its way to going back straight ahead again. So once you practice this, you know, you might have to have a go at it, I don't know, 10 or 15,000 times until it becomes muscle memory. But once you can do that, you get your hands to work with your right foot, cornering becomes child's play. It's so simple, even a politician could do it. But you have to learn the firmware first. So the hot tip here is do not fight the steering with the throttle at any point in the bend. If you're at any point in a corner and you want to turn in a little bit harder, do not just wind on more and more lock because there are situations where that simply won't help. And then if you want to come out of a bend or you want to assume a slightly wider radius, then all you need to do is hold the steering where it is and accelerate a little bit. Weight transfer to the back, a little bit less grip at the front. Car's going to run a little bit wide in a controlled, reasonable fashion. And at the end of the day, that's a pretty neat trick. And if you wire it in, it's just another tool in the non-crap driving arsenal for you. Once you've tried it for a little bit, you know, it does become quite instinctive. If you want that nose to tuck in a little bit harder and the car to turn a little bit more, particularly in situations where you are close to or on the limit of adhesion, just lifting off the throttle a bit is such a more effective technique than winding on a bunch more lock and hoping for the best. That typically does not end well in extreme situations. The other thing I'd suggest to you, and this is a little bit like what they say to new recruits in the military, when it comes to cornering, slow is smooth, right? And smooth is fast, and this is very, very true. It doesn't pay to be harsh on the controls as you're walking through a corner. It's less a matter of fighting and much more a matter of flowing at the risk of sounding like friggin' Yoda or something. So if you practice this well below the limit of adhesion, you'll have those circuits wired in upstairs and then one day perhaps when it really counts for you to get this right, it'll just pop out and you'll go, oh my God, how did that happen? 
I wonder where that came from. And it might have something to do with the hundreds to thousands of corners you've practiced on well below the limit of adhesion. Anyway, I hope this helps. Maybe you'll be able to banish one crap driver from your life by passing this on. Who knows? I'm John Cadogan. Thanks for watching.